Tobias Rankenmeyer with pocket queens. Raising on the button to 35,000. Probably feels a little bit closer to first when he gets dealt such a big hand on the button. Mm hmm. Phillip out of the way, and it's back over to Scott Seaver with 10 9 offsuit. Pretty standard defend from Scott with his chip stack. And the flop is four, Jack seven. Scott checks with the gut shot straight draw. Two queens still way out in front. And Toby started this hand with 300,000 chips, the blinds being 18 and 16,000, so Toby under 20 big blinds. The blinds being 8 and 16,000. So Scott here flopped some equity with 10-9, flopped a gut shot, not going anywhere to Toby's continuation bet. Ah, the good old days, the Alpha 8. Everybody knows what that means, right? Alpha 8, 100K buy-ins, only 20 players, but there's three players left, and there's a $250,000 jump between third and second and a 500K jump between second and first. So there's a lot of money right. to be won here. And there's some big names here with Rankemeyer and Seaver. Let's get to the most interesting decision so far, because Rankemeyer's decisions have been pretty easy, I think. You know, oh, yeah. opening queens. Okay, good job. You did it. And <laughs> then you bet on this flop and you're happy to get it in with your stack at 18 blinds to start the hand if Seaver decides to go with anything. No question. Seaver calling is is curious. And we talked about this on our podcast at a little bit more length. It is a gut shot, but the stack to power ratio is really not ideal for this type of hand. I mean, we have even if we're getting all of Rankemeyer's chips every time that an eight comes, it's barely OK. And it's if not, not okay. really it's not okay. even OK, it's yeah. not good enough. Um, I would say I guess we have two cards to come, so we're gonna we're gonna hit an eight something like one every five and a half times. So maybe it's okay, but we have to also get to the river for free. Yeah, like, it's... like we pay this one, but other, because often we're gonna have to pay more on the turn. We can see with Rankemeyer's hand, we're often gonna have to do that, right? So like, yeah, if we never have to pay another dime, it's okay to call here, I think. But but that's not the case. No, it, it, short. He's it gonna feels like we have in. so many other hands that we can continue with. We don't have to continue with this one. Um, I, Seaver may have a plan to, to bluff clubs or bluff on certain cards like board pairing type cards or something like that. But when, when Tobias is so short, you're not really going to get him to fold that many good hands. Like right. it's really hard for that to happen. Yeah. Tobias is going to absolutely be stuck to the pot with top pair better and maybe even sometimes a little bit worse. Right. Uh, I, I just find this whole thing really surprising. As you said, stack to pots, a real problem here. We really need Tobus, Tobias, <laughs> Tobis? I, I like Tobus. Tobus is a cool name, too. Uh, Tobias to just have more chips to make this a reasonable play, I think. Yeah, that's I think surprising. that's kind of the long and short of it, and it's a bit of a surprise coming from Seaver. It feels like there must be something that he's aware of with Tobias or some metagame strategy that he has that we're just not aware of because he's clearly a good player and a smart guy, oh, and he yeah. knows what he's doing. I mean, uh, the initial things that come to mind for me are, one, if it goes check-check on the turn, you're just always firing on yeah. unimproved river, so you're going to try and steal, and you think you're going to succeed a lot doing that. Number one. Um, number two, I don't have anything. You don't else. have number two? I had number two in it. it I guess it's away. just number one. Yeah. Let's see what these guys do. Okay. Number two is, of course, Nitrogen Sports. That's the reason that Scott Seaver called. Use the link in our pinned tweet when you sign up for Nitrogen to get access to the greatest iterated value in poker. It's our monthly Poker Guys tournament. It's a lot of fun. They have a rebuy and an add on now. Woohoo! So, you know, it's. You splash around a little bit. Action, baby. Action, baby. If you want some more action, they got sports betting. They got casino games. You get your money out fast. 90 minutes or less to get your Bitcoin off nitrogen. 37,000. And the turn is a 10. Definitely improving Scott's hand, giving him a pair of 10s to go along with his straight draw. Not a great card for Toby, but still definitely worth a second bet, especially with Toby's chip stack here. I think he's willing to bet and get all in. 158,000 in the middle. Toby's thinking about how much he wants to fire. And he settles on 65,000. Less than half the pot. This leaves Toby with about 150,000 remaining in his stack. Action back on Seaver. What's he thinking? Well, he's thinking about the stacks. He's thinking about the equity he has in his hand. And he's decided that it's worth a call here for 65000 
We'll see a river, 288,000 in the pot, and it's the Ace of Clubs. And this is a card that will usually freeze the action, usually make it go check, check here. Yeah, third club and an overcard to the two queens. Action on Seaver. Come all in. And he moves all in. Wow. And this is an illustration of what really separates the good players in poker from the truly great players. Scott Seaver, recognizing the fact that his pair of tens is probably not good enough to win, understanding that he can put the pressure on Toby for his tournament life, Scott having Toby out chipped, even if he were to lose this pot, would still be alive in the tournament. And remember that Toby doesn't have that many chips. He just knows that he beats absolutely nothing here. And he folds the winner. Ah, the mercurial Scott Seaver, like the like Mercury, the planet. Well said. And uh, yeah, because he's so hard to discern what he's doing. That and is not what, why we say mercurial. You know it's that, because right? it's in retrograde all the time. No, it's not. It's the element. <laughs> it's because it's because the element of mercury causes great health concerns for many people. I mean, that and is Scott Seaver is trying to cause great health concerns for Tobias Rankemeyer's bank account. Nice. You know what I'm saying? I love it. And he does so successfully, which we will get to. But let's quickly go back to the turn before okay. we talk about this strange shove by Scott Seaver. The turn feels a lot more vanilla, a lot more rudimentary here. Sure. Where Tobias, sure, he's happy to get it in. I know the 10 is a slightly wet card, but he's short. He's got an overpair still. If Seaver moves in, Tobias is calling, right? Yes, for sure. Has so, to. so that's all fine. Seaver can't do anything really except for what he did. I mean, he pairs the 10. Maybe he had some sort of grand plan, but now his hand is a little too good to enact a grand plan. And you certainly can't fold at this point when you pair the 10 and still have the gut shot. You can have the best hand. You've got equity. It would seem it's only four blinds. You're never folding. Okay. What do you make of this shove? I mean, okay. it's so out of flow. That's the first part that's so strange about it. It's just check, call, check, call, then shove. It's pretty interesting. First of all, let's be clear. Seaver's not moving in for, for this huge amount. Like it says, what, 455K? It's 150K yeah. is what Toby's effective stack is, and that's what matters. It's nine blinds. Mm -hmm. uh, the pot is almost 300K. It's like half a pot. Uh, the thing is that this shove is, makes a lot of Tobias's range unhappy, right? Because like even if Tobias has a hand, like a, an ace, even if he rivers the ace, well, the flush just came in. What is Scott supposed to have that he just shoves here? Okay, but let's think this through. Yeah. Tobias didn't river the ace. What what ace did Tobias river unless he rivered aces up? I know. It's like ace jack, which is going to call. a seven, if somehow he bet the turn, which is not impossible because it was a wet enough board, probably doesn't, but maybe, is going to have to call. And the ace of clubs is what the river is, so exactly. he doesn't have the ace x of clubs. Right. So it's basically just like ace eight and ace nine are the only aces that really make sense unless Tobias was just like, Charging the draws a lot on the turn with like ace queen and ace king, but it doesn't seem super. It doesn't likely. seem that likely. And so, the thing that is strange to me about this shove is that it feels like Scott doesn't have a combo that really matters in co in concert with the board at all. He doesn't have a club to block anything. Yeah. And there's no reason to believe that Tobias doesn't have a flush now. Also, there's there's nothing that says Tobias doesn't have a flush. There's also reasons to believe Scott doesn't have a flush himself because he went check call check call when Tobias was this short. You figure he's going to jam a lot on flop or turn a yeah. lot of the time. Yeah, if he has any sort of club draw. draw. Yeah, not so. all, I'm sure not all the time. He's got Seaver. He's going to be somewhat balanced, but a lot of the time. So what you came up with on the podcast is really the only thing that we could think of as, yeah. to, as to why Seaver might do this. He's thinking, okay, if Tobias had a flush draw or king-queen, he would have bet more on the turn. Right. Because he wanted to generate more fold equity and he wanted to like give himself a good price if he got jammed on. Right, because if you get jammed on with King Queen after you bet 65K with 150 back, you might just feel like you have to fold right. in 100K. So, I mean, to be clear, this is a stretch yeah. to, to imagine that Tobias is that unbalanced. But let's say for a second that's the case. Sure. You have to take that and you have to pair it with Seaver believing that Tobias is not betting his big aces on the turn. He's checking those back. So his most likely hands are a good jack, queens and kings and he does happen to have queens Seaver knows he's losing to those hands and also knows they have to consider folding yeah so if you put all of that together maybe this makes some sense but that feels like really walking the tightrope it really feels like it uh I mean Tobias agrees he doesn't fold right away with a hand that would might feel almost like a natural fold we do block the nuts in a few different ways but still 
feels like kind of a natural fall on this ace of clubs, right? But he doesn't. He, like, stares. He thinks about it because this uh, smells a little fishy. It does smell a little fishy. I guess if you were Seaver and you were to play clubs this way up until the river, jamming makes some sense. You'd be worried that a lot of hands are going to check back that you might be able to eke some value out of. I suppose that's the case. I suppose, but not very many hands can you eke value out of, of course, which is why he's jamming yeah because i mean in a way that makes it kind of a good jam even though it doesn't make any damn sense it doesn't seem to make any sense but if you're tobias you're saying you're like well i guess he could have made aces up with like a seven or yeah. ace four maybe ace ten once in a while uh i guess he could have a little bit of clubs i guess he has to right and i mean we block king queen and there's it's just hard to Imagine Scott could ever play King Queen like this and get to the river with this kind of action. It, King, it, Queen. It's all very strange. I understand why Tobias folds because yes. it's a strong move by Seaver. I would fold, I think. It just it feel like for such a good player like Scott Seaver, it feels a little button clicky almost, it, it, which is odd to say about a guy like Scott Seaver. This whole hand is he's making decisions that feel a little bit off, and I wonder if this is just the 2013 of it all, or if something was off, or if by the way he's Scott Seaver, he might just be able to say like, no, no, no. Here's the four reasons why I did these things. And, of course, they make perfect sense. And that sense. certainly might be the case. Or you know what? He might have a stone cold read on Tobias. Who knows? Yes, they That's are That's possible, friends. too. They, do know, they play a lot with each other. Either way, to us, it's Mercury. Oh, to solve 2013. What a year. What a year to solve. What a tangled web we, is that web when, we weave is when, that when we, we solve were, to deceive. Is that, yeah. <laughs> is that when we were introduced to Adele and Her Majesty? I'm sure it was. 2013. What a year. Okay. What a year for Scott Seaver getting these bluffs through, but should it have worked, Jonathan? That's what Wesley Cannon tried to divine for us. Ooh, with his using magical his, solver powers. Uh, more entrails and bones than that, oh. but you know how it That's works fine. with I'm, the solvers. See, we don't ask Wesley and Danny <laughs> the solver methods because right. of ethical dilemmas that could come up later. You really? Know? Oh, you mean like if... If they if if, if for the example if the authorities were to ask us <laughs> hypothetically if there was did, a human how sacrifice he, how did Wesley solve this hand between <laughs> Tobias Rankemeyer and Scott Seaver? It would be great if I didn't have to say <laughs> under penalty of perjury yeah. that it was through the killing of many people. Yes, or even one. Yeah. Even one person might be problematic yeah. with the, the authorities. So luckily we don't actually know, but yeah. we have our guesses, and they include things that have already been mentioned. Anyway, here we go. What does the solver want to do? On the flop, Wesley did give Tobias the option to bet bigger so that he could jam the turn. Yeah. Uh, and the solver did prefer that. I get that, logically. I, yeah. I assume the solver would then want Seaver to fold, uh, but it does want him to call for this size, which we were a bit questioning that yeah. Seaver called. We were just wondering because of the uh, the implied odds in terms of how big Toby stack size was, but the solver says, it's fine. Yeah. So, all right. Solver says, okay. Interesting. It's okay. It, it also wants him to raise if he has a club, not even two clubs, but a club is enough for Seaver to raise. Hmm. Just because it blocks some of Toby's continues. Yeah. Right. Probably yeah. so. Um, on the turn, I wrote one thing for the solver. Wesley wrote a lot more, but I wrote, they did it right, which. Yeah. Seems, not surprising. Seems to make plenty of sense. You know, with a pair, how can you fold if you're Seaver? It, with Rankemeyer's stack, it doesn't feel reasonable to check back at this point. It, it all seems good to me. If you want to see more about what Wesley said, check out the Discord. He's going to put his full write-up there. He sure is, because that's what he does. Yeah, along with other things. <laughs> Photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, the entrails. Yeah, that's all what right. I'm talking about. All right, let's get to the, the meat and potatoes here. Okay. And the avocados. The, the solver does not like Seaver's jam on the river. No. Which is not a huge surprise. Like We didn't, Like I mean, we said, there's no real reason to choose this hand to shove with. Right. Why? It seems odd. It's just about what he expects Rankemeyer to have. But that seems like it could still include a lot of hands that can call. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Toby absolutely can have King Queen. Of course, he can have clubs. He can have aces up. He can have sets. He can have all the things, right? Yes, he can. Um, so should he call, though, with this right. hand, with his queens? He does have the queen of clubs, too. I mean, it's kind of the perfect blocker. So unsurprisingly, in solver world... The answer is yes, you're supposed to call. Yeah. I mean, I completely give Toby credit anyway. Like, sure, you're supposed to call. And I can see now how even someone like, say, you or me might be sitting in a tournament setting or a cash game setting and decide to call with this hand in this spot because we know so much. But in 2013, I don't know how you can do anything but fold if you don't know all the things we know now about blockers. There's no way Tobias knew about all that stuff back then. No, I mean, he's Can't German. Hold it he's German. It. They don't have blockers. <laughs> <laughs> they barely have words. Yeah. They just have bratwurst. Uh, mm. It's pretty good. It can be good. It's very good. 
depending some cream on. cheese and a pickle in that thing. Sure, why not? Anyway, <laughs> that's the solver. And that is how the money went down, people. What do you think about all this? So Solver did not like uh, Seaver's Jam. Solver actually didn't like Toby's Fold against the Jam. I get both of these points of view. We were much less fans of Seaver's Jam also because, of course, he had a pair and it didn't seem to be the hand to do it with. Uh, what do you guys think about all the different decisions throughout this hand, though? We even questioned Seaver calling on the flop. Solver thinks it's fine. Let us know in the comments what you think, what you would do, and why. Yes, and as I mentioned in the solver section, if you want to hear more about the solver, check out our Discord, where you can hear more about the solver, but also you know post your comments there. We have a lively discussion going on. Uh, we also do movies, sports, general poker talk, fun stuff. We'll see you there. See you there.